A New York jury has reached a verdict in the Marla Hansen case. She's the model who was slashed in the face by attackers. Jeff Weiser has the story. After three days of deliberation, the jury found 28-year-old Stephen Roth guilty in the brutal attack on Marla Hansen. Roth hired two men who slashed the model's face with a razor blade, leaving disfiguring wounds that took more than 100 stitches to close. Marla Hansen's lawyer says his client is relieved and she may file a suit. We've always considered the possibility of suing. Uh, we certainly still are considering it. Uh, one thing that concerned me was how many times she'll have to go through the ordeal of testifying about the attack. Uh, but we are considering it, yes. During the trial, it was revealed that Roth had been a homosexual and that one of the male thugs who sliced up Miss Hansen's face did it out of jealousy. Roth's attorney says his client is scared to go to jail now that his homosexuality has been revealed. And, uh, obviously, under those circumstances, uh, prison life is not uh, conducive. Roth could face up to 15 years in jail on the assault charge. Marla Hansen's scars are permanent. Her surgeon says she'll never be able to move her face the way she used to. He says the muscle that allows her to smile has been severed. I think that somebody that does something like this, just out of cold blood, shouldn't be walking around because he'll do it again to somebody else or maybe to me. Jeff Weiser, CNN, New York. Actor Dustin Hoffman is in the middle of a legal mess. Hoffman and the caretaker of his estate in Roxbury, Connecticut, are being sued over the death of the caretaker's girlfriend. The suit claims Hoffman is partly to blame for the drowning death of the woman in the estate's hot tub. New York police are searching for a white mob that chased a black man to his death on a city highway. Police say Michael Griffith was struck by a car early yesterday as he and two others tried to escape the gang that was attacking them. Whatever resources uh, the city of New York through its police department and any other agency that can be helpful can bring to bear will be brought to bear in this case. This is the number one law enforcement case for the city until it's solved because of the racial implications. The city has posted a $10,000 reward for information leading to arrests. There are plans to build a civil rights museum at the site of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination in Memphis, Tennessee. But Sasha Fu reports King's widow is vehemently opposed to the idea. I have a dream. His dreams were indestructible. The man was not. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was killed by an assassin's bullet on the balcony of a Memphis motel. The year was 1968. This is the Lorraine Motel today, looking virtually the same as it did on the day Dr. King died. The Lorraine still rents rooms. The going rate is 18 to $25 a night in a rundown neighborhood frequented by prostitutes. But the Lorraine has become more than a motel. It is something of a shrine for the pilgrims who come by the hundreds. They say, where did King fall? Um, where was the uh, assassin? Some people uh, become very emotional. It's just the thing of walking through those doors. What visitors to room 306 see is a display of photos and yellowing clippings, a small tribute to King's memory. Some say there ought to be more. It's a tragedy that Dr. King was killed here, but it's a tremendous challenge to us to do something with it. DeArmy Bailey, a Memphis lawyer, is leading the drive to build a civil rights museum on the site of the Lorraine. His plans call for restoring the motel to its original condition in 1968 and building a multimedia exhibit on the struggle for black civil rights. State and local governments have committed $8 million to the project. King died in Memphis, but he is buried here at the King Center in Atlanta. The center is the creation of his widow, Coretta Scott King, and it is she who is the most vigorous opponent of the museum in Memphis. Those close to Mrs. King say she thinks her husband's life and not his death should be commemorated, and she's expressed her displeasure with a threat. She's told the group in Memphis she will sue if it tries to use the King name. Despite her objections, construction on the Lorraine is expected to start this spring. Sasha Fu, CNN reporting. A Chicago baby is in critical condition. The six-month-old girl, Megan LaRocco, underwent a third liver transplant operation today. Her second transplant was completed less than 24 hours before today's surgery. The baby's case attracted national attention after thieves stole money collection cans to pay for the original transplant. 
Rub a dub dub. Doctors now say a hands on approach helps to soothe your baby's cares away. Irene Mayer has this report on the revival of an ancient infant care tradition. These moms are learning the gentle art of infant massage. It's not new to many non Western cultures, but it's only been popular in the United States for about 10 years. The woman responsible is Vimala Schneider, who learned the benefits of infant massage in India and wrote a book about it. Donna Feingold was a student of Schneider and is a certified infant massage instructor. It's just a stroking of the skin, a firm but gentle stroke, not kneading the muscle type of thing. Infant massage is a combination of Indian massage, Swedish massage, and something called reflexology. Reflexology is basically massage of the feet and we have several different strokes that we do on the feet. Sometimes it tickles, but it also relaxes babies and reinforces bonding. I'll massage when she'll laugh and talk. She just, I think she really enjoys it a lot. Well, we had a problem with um, gas pains and colic, and he's been really good. That's, it's helped a lot. We're closer, it's, we do a lot of massaging during bath time, and he relaxes, and we're just together, and, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You can check with your local hospital for classes, but there are private instructors in infant massage. You should ask, though, if the teacher is a certified infant massage instructor. For CNN, this is Irene Mayer reporting. Stay tuned. The news continues. I'm Gavin McLeod, and if you or your spouse or your parents are between the ages of 50 and 74, I'm going to ask you to make a very important telephone call as soon as this announcement is over. And I hope this is one call you'll make instantly and not put off. But first, I'd like you to meet a very special couple, Gordon and Mickey Scott. They recently heard about the Security Trust life insurance plan and called for their free information kit. Why? We worked hard all our lives to provide for our family and build our savings. Lately, we've really been concerned about what a prolonged illness and death could do to the nest egg we've worked so hard to build. We felt that additional life insurance was the answer, but we didn't think we could get it because Gordon is 71 and has had two heart surgeries. That's when we heard about this plan. They said we couldn't be turned down and that it only cost $5 a month. I can't tell you how much it means to Mickey and me not to have to worry anymore about becoming a burden on our children. That's terrific. And just like the Scots, you too can get this guaranteed coverage for only $5 a month, so long as you're between 50 and 74. We'd like to mail you this free information kit, but we can't mail it until you call for it, and that's what I hope you'll do right now. Now, it doesn't matter how many other insurance plans you've called for. Believe me, you should definitely call for this one. Here's how. Call toll-free 1-800-453-2600. 1-800-453-2600. The information kit Mr. McLeod spoke of will be mailed to you free with no obligation. So call now 1-800-453-2600. 1-800-453-2600. This is a free call. It is 19 minutes past the hour. Let's check sports. I'm John Heitbrink, Headline Sports. Two NFL playoff spots are still up for grabs on this, the final weekend of the regular season. Both openings are in the AFC. The NFC teams are set, and the New York Giants now know that they will have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Giants posted their first 14 victory season ever yesterday by routing the Green Bay Packers 55-24. So the Giants will now be off until January 3rd or 4th when they will meet either the Los Angeles Rams or the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional playoffs. So we'll try to rest up. I don't think we get anybody seriously hurt. Got a few bruises, but uh, we just hope we'll get ready for the playoffs. Uh, we don't have any preference as to who we play. 
and uh, we'll just watch with interest next week on the wild card situation, see what happens. But I'm glad we're playing at home, and our fans deserve it, and uh, we're going to do the best we can. College football bowl action last night in Shreveport. Mark Young set an Independence Bowl record by throwing for 343 yards as Ole Miss defeated Texas Tech 20 to 17. Young picked up the game's most valuable player award by completing 30 of 50 passes. The bowl victory was the Rebels' first since 1971. College basketball, Kenny Smith made the difference yesterday for third-ranked North Carolina. He poured in nine of his 22 points during a 16-0 spurt in the second half to lead the Tar Heels past fifth-ranked Illinois, 90-77. The Tar Heels now 6-1 on the year. NBA, the Los Angeles Lakers missed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar last night. The veteran center returned to Los Angeles because of an eye problem. Without Kareem, the Lakers fell to the Mavericks in Dallas, 130-119. Orlando Blackman poured in 39 for the Mavs. That's it. I'm John Heitfrank. Headline Sports. I'm Stan Case, and you better watch out because Santa Claus is coming to town. Actually, more than 100 Santas are already in Tokyo checking out who's naughty and nice. The pack of Knicks are U.S. and Canadian telephone workers. Their mission, to spread joy and goodwill. Say hello to USA from Tokyo. Merry Christmas to Merry you Christmas. all. The money raised will go to charities worldwide. An old Christmas tradition continues in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's the Luminaria Tour, which consists of 20,000 paper bags filled with sand and candles. I'm not from New Mexico, and I think it's just fantastic. It really is. It's gorgeous. I think it's beautiful and great. Stan Case, Headline News. In the headlines, Terry Wade is about to begin another mission to Lebanon to win freedom for the hostages. The Anglican Church envoy hopes to return to Beirut before Christmas. The chairman of the Senate Investigating Committee says foreign governments, including Iran, may be questioned about their involvement with the Iran-Contra arms deal. And the Voyager aircraft is riding tailwinds towards the coast of South America today, aiming for a Tuesday landing in California. Mission Control says getting home will be the hardest part. Those are the headlines. I'm Lori Butterfield. More news after this. Should your name be on this envelope? It should if you or someone you love is age 50 to 80. And it will be addressed to you if you call now for this important information. Free information about a life insurance policy designed especially for men and women age 50 to 80. Life insurance with no physical examination and no medical questions. You cannot be turned down regardless of your health or for any reason. And your premium will be $6.95 a month and will never increase. Colonial Penn Life Insurance Company wants to send you the important information in this envelope, and it's free. So if you are age 50 to 80 and thought it would be difficult to buy life insurance, shouldn't you call now? Here's the number. For free information in the mail, call 800-533-1400. This is a free call, 800-533-1400. manufacturers can make the most dollars and cents off the most unusual products. This year's hot items are ugly, even gross, and are expected to rack up big bucks. Jan Hopkins reports. Last year it was Garbage Pail Kids, a gross takeoff on Cabbage Patch Kids. Weird was in with a school set. Now watch out for skateboard smack-ups. They're coming in 87. <laughs> Collectible $5 characters include Tammy Tailpipe, she's got the Midas touch, and Tommy Tire Track. When tested on children, smack-ups scored big. In the first test, showed a 19% positive attitude by the kids that they wanted it, and our advertising agency said that 19% 
for children to want that toy when it was not advertised and they never saw it before was fun.